Hello friends and gamers! Welcome to my game review I like to call Buy, Wait, or Avoid. Today's game, it's Void Bastards. So the description of Void Bastards is this, it's inspired by Bioshock and System Shock 2. Void Bastards, it's a new kind of strategy shooter. It'll test your nerves as well as exercise your aim. And it asks if you're gonna be the misfit prisoner of the Void Ark to survive the derelict spaceships and the dangers of the Sargasso Nebula. That's the description. Void Bastards, it's $30 US on the Steam Store. There's an option for $35 US for the Deluxe Edition, which includes the game and the official soundtrack. They advertise a 12 to 15 hour campaign. It's developed by Blue Manchu, published by Humble Bundle. It's available on Microsoft Windows and Mac OS. So with all that said, you might still be asking, well, what is Void Bastards? Well, I'm gonna show you. Here is your workbench. And your goal here is to get across the nebula, collecting certain items that are required to move on to the next step. And the computer is gonna tell you what these items are. Might be a line printer, might be a mouse ball, it might be an ID card. And so you're gonna track across all these derelict spaceships to find this. But along the way, you're gonna be collecting materials to build parts like this. And once you are able to build these parts and you have enough materials, the materials are bio, data, plas, slag, and volts. When you have the correct materials to build the parts, with the parts then you can build upgrades for your weapons, you can build weapons, you can build modifiers for your weapons, you can build grenades like these bangers, you can build a spiker gun, bushwhacker which are like landmines, kitty bots, <laughs> all this fun stuff. You can also upgrade your armor as well as a lot of different things. These trainers decrease oil slip time by 50%, decrease nausea, decrease fire damage, decrease radiation damage. So along the way, you're going to encounter these things. If you die, it doesn't really punish you. It gives you a subsidy of ammo, of food and fuel to continue on your journey. And each character has its own attributes or lack thereof. This particular one, Jack Pittman, he's got excellent aim. He's got a dead eye type perk, but he's anxious. He gets the feeling that combat has started. He gets anxious. Whatever that effect is, he's got both of those. But if he dies, the computer will replace you with a new prisoner with different attributes. And they're very strange and very crazy. You can see the action item that I have is I'm going for a human resources computer. So it wants me to travel across the nebula, across these derelict ships, looking to get the parts to build an HR computer. And along the way, I'm looking to collect fuel, food, and merits, as well as some powerful options like warp keys, torpedoes. Not only can you build the parts, but you can find them. They'll give you a little indicator that there's some parts on some of these ships that you can go to and collect those without having to use your resources to build the parts. Let's take a look at some gameplay. So once you choose the ship that you want to dock on, you choose your loadout and you, based on the parts and pieces that you've built, you have your strategy set up, whether you want to bring kitty bots, staple gun, you know, what kind of pistol or what, what kind of enemies you're going to be facing really will dictate what you bring on board. So each ship you board shows you the layout. And this particular one, obviously, we need to restore power before we can do anything. We can't do any looting unless the looting is laying on the ground. So you got to find the generator room, go turn on the power, fight your way there. Then my suggestion is work your way to the helm because the helm will provide a map where all the good stuff is, all the good loot. And that's the best way to do it. Some ships, I found most of the ships don't require power right away, but there is a there's a fair percentage of them. And if there's no power required, you can head right in and start looting away. Now, some of these enemies, there's there's a fair amount of different types of enemies, and some are super strong. Some are really weak, but they'll explode. So they have a kind of an area of effect, a radius, that you have to be very careful that when you shoot them, that you're not too close to them. But you can use that explosion to kill other enemies, to kill some of these 
uh, machine gun turret, these bots that are sitting there waiting to shoot you. There's a lot of upgrades you can do along the way. Like, you can turn the bots to be on your side, but it's going to cost you merits. Things like that, a lot of things cost you merits. If you look at the textures, you can see kind of a Borderlands-esque, a Borderlands feel to it, that heavy cell shading, the heavy outline, the cartoon look, the comic book effect. I, I really like it. I really enjoy this look of a game, especially a game that runs so smooth. This game runs very, very well. Uh, the music and the voiceovers, it's, it's just wacky enough to be interesting to me. You can see I opened up that map on the helm and it showed me all the locations based off these stars. It will also show you a star with an orange background and that would be a special part that may be on one of these ships. And that's, as you go along, you're gonna find more and more that you're looking for these parts. The other loot is good to get, but the part is the main thing because that's going to allow you to upgrade a weapon, to build something new, to upgrade your your armor, your attributes, or kitty bots. <laughs> you can see I'm holding the kitty bot in the hand right now. So what the kitty bot does, just as an example, you throw it out there and it's motorized. It kind of drives around and it... It can take the damage for you. Once it gets killed, it explodes itself too. So some of these enemies that are very hard to kill, I end up throwing a kitty bot out, let them distract the enemy as I move away and find another route. I found almost all the time you'll find two routes to get around the ship. You may not find two routes to get into a specific room, but there's two rounds to, routes to get around the ship, which works out pretty good, especially if you run into a turret that might be long range that you can't shoot. <laughs> a lot of times you avoid enemies because ammo for me is not a luxury, right? You don't have unlimited resources of ammo. You can't craft ammo, you gotta find it. So I find that the game runs really well. I enjoy playing it and I've probably got, I don't know, maybe six hours into it so far, maybe halfway through it, something like that. There's a lot of games these days that have repetitive style missions that become repetitive. Now, if you buy a AAA title for $60, and you're gonna get 30, 40, 50 hours of gameplay that the developer may claim. After 30, 40, 50 hours of gameplay, those repetitive missions start to become annoying. But a game where you have maybe 12 to 15 hours, and there's just enough of a tweak here and there to make it not exactly the same, I don't believe that the repetitiveness becomes annoying in this particular style of game. Now, if this game was longer, I would definitely be looking for more content. I would be definitely looking for more differences between the spaceships, but I'm seeing a lot more as I go along. I saw one that was in darkness where I'm using a flashlight. You get the different enemies. You start to get radiation and fire damage, and there's a lot of different little things that make it unique on each spaceship. So the big question is buy, wait, or avoid. Well, let me put it to you this way. For me, it was a buy. It was a buy and I'm glad I did. So I would say if you buy more than 10 games a year, then it's a buy. If you buy less than 10 games a year, maybe you're more like five games a year, I would say wait till maybe it goes on sale. That's one of those things because I look at how much game time am I gonna get for the value. It's really fun. If this is your genre, a video game then definitely buy it but if you don't buy that many games per year i would say wait till it goes on sale based off the play time that you get unless it's your genre and definitely go for it it's not an, an avoid game it's a fun game it should be supported i think games like this that run well and that are super fun they look good they're unique in their own way they have all these touches of other games but there's a uniqueness to this game that's a lot of fun more than 10 games a year buy less than 10, 10 games a year maybe wait for it to go on sale but don't avoid this one. It's super fun, especially if you like that genre. So I hope you guys liked my game review of buy, wait, or avoid for Void Bastards. Definitely buy. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next review.